So we are now sitting right here, folks. We're right in between classic and modern. Sort of a paradigm shift taking place here now. That was my paradigm shift. So um, it's, it isn't, it really isn't classic, and it's not necessarily part of the modern, but this idea came up uh, in the modern mediation analysis context. It's an idea from the, the causal, causal uh, effect group of researchers. So here's how it goes in a shortened version. A longer version is in the book. Uh, we have the standard picture here, x influencing m and y, and m influencing y, and we have a control variable c. I was mentioning that c is good for many reasons. It increases the power to be able to detect effects of x on y, but it's also a way to uh, control for possible confounding, mediator outcome confounding. And that is, if we leave out c, which we show in the bottom picture, there's no c here, right? But if it's that is, if in the analysis we leave out C, but C really should be part of the model, it does influence M and Y, but it's not in the model, then it will cause this, these residuals to be correlated, right? And that's the mediated outcome confounding. And then uh, in the uh, causal effect literature, particularly by uh, IMAI, I-M-A-I, I -M -A -I, in psychological methods and in statistical science, you have the references in the book. Uh, he came up with an idea to actually study the effect of this kind of residual correlation. So what statisticians do when they find that a model is non-identified is to do so-called sensitivity analysis. You can imagine that you can fix this correlation, even though you can't estimate it because it's not identified on top of this effect. You can fix it at different values and see, uh, while well you estimate this and see and this, and see how the effects are affected by that. In a very shallow way, that description, that is what uh, Imai suggested. So this residual correlation, we'll call it rho, cannot be identified, but we can do the sensitivity analysis. And we're going to look at graphs that show effects and confidence intervals as a function of rho. And the question here is, is the estimated effect still significant for a realistic range of rho values? So I'll, I'll give you an example of that. And it's um, in the simulated part of the sensitivity analysis description. So here we're looking at the indirect effect on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, you have rho, the correlation between the residual. You can go from minus 1 to plus 1. And here we have a situation. We can follow the bullets here. It's very clearly laid out. The true indirect effect is 0 0.25. True indirect effect is here. You can write 0 0.25. That, that's where you scribble it. Or oh, you can do it here, too. Now, standard assumption is that rho is equal to 0. If rho is equal to 0, this is the estimate that we will get, 0 0.36. So scribble 0 0.36 here. So if you generate data uh, and analyze where you have a certain rho correlation and analyze it without it, you're going to get an indirect effect estimate that's 0 0.36 instead of 0 0.25. The true rho is 0 0.30. So we generate data with true rho 0 0.30. And that is uh, here. If you do a line here, draw a line down to this. Uh, this is the, hits the rho value of 0 0.3. So that is when you, at, if you were fixing rho at its true value, 0 0.3, you would get the right indirect effect value of 0 0.25. Are you following me? Yeah. You don't. You don't know what rho is. But, well, I'm demonstrating uh, to you what would happen if you, hap if you happen to get the right value. I'm, I'm just building up to how to interpret this. Now, you never know what rho is, but we'll get to that. So true rho is the x-axis value that gives you true indirect effect, so it's here. 
So now, you look at this graph. You have the uh, indirect effect uh, values here. And you have the confidence intervals. And what you w would want you know, is an indirect effect uh, that is, in this case, significantly different from 0. And you would get that in this over here. You get it here. But then here is where the lower confidence band hits uh, indirect effect of 0. So out here, for these row values, we cannot reject that the indirect effect is 0. For these high row values, uh, we can't reject that the indirect effect is 0. So that's what it says here. The unknown row needs to be higher than 0 0.6 for the effect to be significant, but for the effect to be insignificant. So the way you reason about this, you say that kind of a high row value, 0 0.6 is a high residual correlation, is unlikely to happen. So that's, you can reason about that. Therefore, the effect can be considered trustworthy or robust. You know, if, if that line had crossed the y equals 0 line here somewhere for a very ro low row value, you wouldn't have much confidence in the indirect effect. Because there's so many factors that can come into play that unobserved variables, not measured variables, that influence both m and y. So, this, so the take home message from this graph is if you get a, a graph like this, you should be happy. That's a simple message. Uh, Morten will show you a graph where you're not so fortunate. But this is um, the steps that you take. So I actually generate, in the book, you show, uh, I show how to generate uh, data with a true row of 0 0.30, and then analyze it by the standard assumption. And then you get the misestimated indirect effect of 0 0.36. That is that value, whereas the true indirect effect is 0 0.25, which you would get if you happen to guess the true row value, 0 0.30, but you don't. All right, so now you know how to reason about this and how to do a sensitivity analysis and how to uh, interpret the graph. So now it's all clear, and here comes Morton. He's going to complicate matters. Yeah, I'm just going to mess this up, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs>